everyone and welcome to Obedient Family TV. The program is Hope Alive. Yes, there is hope in Nigeria. And certainly, a new Nigeria is definitely possible. On a good morning, afternoon, and evening, depending on our time zone. Today, I've come out to, you know, bring uh, our people everywhere across uh, the country and the diaspora of what is happening. Just two things I want to bring this Sunday. Of course, a uh, good Sunday to everybody wherever you are. I greet you all. So um, we know that His Excellency P2B has been doing a, a thank you tour or, um, or other names that you might want to call it, but in the United States. Of course, uh, we know that he also um, did some lectures at the, and also attended to question and answers on the lectures that was done at the uh, Harvard Law School in Boston, USA. So, of course, um, several uh, questions were, were asked by the obedience and well-meaning Nigeria who came to receive His Excellency, and he has been having um, discussions with them moving forward and, uh, and uh, the structure of the obedient movement. All of this discussion is going on, and I also will not fail to mention our own Dr. Mo, uh, of course, one of the leaders of the obedient movement who is on this very trip. And we keep uh, updating uh, obedience and well-meaning Nigerians of the activity of His Excellency in the U.S. So uh, we are going to be bringing all the except of the short and all the other things that Dr. Mo talked about and the tweet, of course, uh, you could actually go to his page uh, to read most of the tweets that uh, he also did and the reactions of the obedience. But because of the short nature of this video, am I might not going to the um, all the uh, post, but you can see it from the screen uh, where he was talking about what happened in New Jersey, also uh, what happened in Boston. So let's get uh, to this. I also want to take this uh, opportunity to announce the meeting that is going to happen in less than uh, 30 minutes from now. The Obedient Family um, Cooperative Society meeting that we are going to have this, uh, this evening by 7 p.m. today being Sunday, the 14th day of April 2024. The link and the Zoom invite link will be displayed at this particular uh, video and the comment section at the description of this very video, you are going to get uh, the Zoom invite link. And uh, we expect that uh, Nigerians, well-meaning Nigerians and obedience, wherever they are, should join this very meeting so that we can address some of the questions and answers that has to do with the structural framework of the obedient movement moving forward. As you know, we have adopted the option of uh, going through uh, the cooperative society structure, which are now being registered across the 774 local governments in Nigeria. And the obedience at the grassroots structures are actually doing this. Kudos to all of them from different local governments who have displayed, uh, having registered, have displayed their certificates across uh, the community WhatsApp platforms where we hold our discussions and all of that. And kudos again to all the local governments who have actually uh, joined this very quest to have a grassroots structure for the obedience. This is for all of us, for everybody to come on board, to join hands together to make the obedient movement a thing to recall, and also redefining our options for 2027. We do it. A new Nigeria is possible. So please remind others, send the link to all the platforms that you have, all the obedience support groups in other local governments that are not aware that this meeting is holding or that the registration of a cooperative society of the obedient family is happening. Send it to them so that they can partake in this. 7 p.m., which is few minutes from now, we'll be getting to that. So I, I said, let me quickly use this opportunity to give you the notice of this meeting so that all, everybody can get the uh, information that is required so that we can together build, you know, connect and build a better, stronger structure 
from the grassroots. The foundation is very, very important. Having said all of this, let's again uh, take accepts from, the, from what His Excellency, the tidbits and, um, and all the videos that were sent out courtesy of, his, uh, uh, of uh, Dr. Mo. Moses Paul is doing his best and is making sure that obedience are really updated. So let's take from uh, the excerpt that he sent in from what uh, His Excellency P2B is doing in the USA. When we come back, we'll get you some other news. P2B, um, of course, everyone was very excited. Everyone was very ecstatic to see him come. I think there were a lot of people in the beginning, they even asked, is this a scam? Is he really coming? Um, so it was definitely very well received. Um, but personally, um, I was more interested in the things that he had to say, um, the insights that he had into how governance systems need to be reformed and transformed in Africa, um, and particularly in Nigeria, um, and the role that he sees himself playing in that journey. So one of the organizers who brought Mr. Peter will be here. Just talk to us on the overall reception, things he talked about and what's the feeling at Harvard Law School? Um, first of all, you know, we're very grateful that he accepted to come. Um, it, was, it was really amazing that he was able to make the time from his busy schedule to join us here. Um, so we're very grateful, we're excited. Um, I think the panelists who spoke with him, the attendees who sat to listen, they all benefited, we're all really excited um, to have him and to host him at Harvard Law School. In terms of what the conversations were, they were absolutely amazing. Um, taught some very important points, right? Not just within the context of politics and governance or the context of the participation of youth in the determination of the future of African countries or the African continent, but generally in terms of what the responsibility that we owe, right? As citizens of Africa, as citizens of African countries, how do we perceive our responsibility? How do we take ownership of building like our countries in whatever positions we find ourselves in? positions of control, positions of um, duty, positions of business, How, what, what, what kind of mindset do we take to that? A mindset of integrity, right? A mindset of change, a mindset of accelerated transformation using the resources available to us. Um, so he highlighted very important perspectives which apply across governance, applies to politics, but applies generally to how we should start looking at what we should do about ensuring that we build a continent that we hope we would leave behind or we hope that we can benefit from um, in the near future. Very, very interesting points, very important conversations that we're having um, and we're so very happy that we're able to do this. Uh, Mr. Peter is here. You were part of um, the interactive lecture he gave. Yeah. I just want to know what your take on uh, on it was the expression, was the impact and uh, tell us what, what, just talk to us. I mean, um, <clears throat> first off, Peter will be someone that I deeply admire and is, the particular reason I came here today, for context, I work in New York and I decided to come in this morning for this particular program and I was not disappointed. The thing about Peter B is he's very meteoric and what I mean by that is he challenges you to think about something differently and that's really what I look out for in people, especially persons that I hope to admire in whose footsteps I hope to follow. He mentioned a couple of things today that you know really piqued my interest, and I discussed some of them with him, and I was very impressed. I think that people really underestimate the power of what is happening today, you know, politically speaking. So many persons before now they were not so interested in you know, maybe Nigerian politics. And many persons are still averse to it, understandably so. But what we see today is a rejuvenation of that, you know, that spirit. People are more interested. Even the dissentients, the persons who are things to say that are not so nice about what he's doing, they are interested. So by osmosis, everybody's learning. By osmosis, everybody wants to change. We are now bolder, we are more courageous to challenge the status quo. I mean, he talked about you know, a parliamentary system of government today, and I spoke with um, Professor uh, Hakim Bello Sagi, and he mentioned that that was a really, really interesting point that he, met, that he said, and I don't think I've ever heard you know, any person who, let's say, contested for presidency, or is even a part, part of the, the government mentions something of that sort. So in a nutshell, I think, you know, my, my, my coming to this place is thoroughly justified, justified by the fact that I, am, I, am, I wasn't disappointed, I have never been disappointed in not just the person of Peter Obi, in terms of his character, in terms of his personality. I mean, he saw me today, asked for my name, 
that's not something you get from many persons of his caliber. Uh, it, not just about that, it's also about the question of his philosophy. What is he trying to achieve? You know, as basic as it, as it is, you know, the well-being of Nigerians, making sure that persons are not poor, they are not hungry. These things seem so easy, so, so simple. But these are important philosophies that if every politician really conscientiously held in their hearts, would be in a much better place. So I respect him as a person and I respect his political philosophy. And I want to say that it is, uh, it is an honor to have been here today to listen to him, to hear what he had to say, and to be among a lot of change agents who, just like myself, are interested in the development of the, 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 the country. Thank you. Yeah. As you brought Mr. Peter over here, I want to know what was it about the experience, the impact? What did you feel? Talk to us about Harvard Law School with Mr. Peter Wee today. Well, thank you very much. So my name is Boris Wenu. I'm a, a student at uh, Harvard Kennedy School um, from Benin Republic. And uh, Nigeria is not only is actually the neighboring country, so we actually follow very carefully what's going on there. But I was lucky uh, sometime before actually Nigeria election to be at uh, Harvard Business School where uh, Mr. Obi was invited and actually talk about what his program for Nigerian people would be. Uh, and I will say that I was really, really amazed by what I heard and how inspiring he was. So when my colleagues actually brought up the idea to host him back uh, uh, for this conference, I just thought that was just, you know, phenomenal uh, to open up again after his experience going through election, uh, come to talk to us how, how, uh, what did he learn even after this experience? We know. Uh, so, so that was really the first mindset. That was actually the, the, the major reason. Second, uh, the continent is actually going through a lot of crisis right now. Uh, and we need great leaders to stand up, uh, just not only for the youth, but also for the future of Africa. And we thought that uh, he has some of those uh, inspiring words and ideas that need to be heard and spread out uh, in, within this community, especially if, you know, students who are preparing uh, after getting their degree, preparing to get back to the continent, serve the continent. Uh, hearing from his experience, what he had learned, all those things are really major ways for him. And I mentioned crisis because, you know, we think that there is a leadership crisis going on in the continent, which now is leading to violent crisis really leading to coups and, and, and all those kind of things, the democracy recession, all those kind of things going on the, on the continent. And we need to step up. Uh, he's one of those people actually trying to do that. And, you know, modeling him, learning from him, his experience. Some of, those are some of the major reasons why we brought him here. Thank you. These are excerpts of questions and answers as uh, Dr. Mo tried to get uh, uh, the, uh, the mindset of the people uh, who actually participated in uh, His Excellency P2B's uh, lecture and his visit in the USA. So once again, I want to encourage uh, obedience and well-meaning Nigerians that the ripple name that is being seen here is as a result of an hack. As a matter of fact, um, two days ago, uh, we were informed that there was a minor glitch that actually happened, and that's why the name Obedient Family TV is no longer uh, showing or no longer available. However, yesterday, further clarifications were done by YouTube that uh, Obedient Family TV was partially hacked. And but as be it as it may, uh, we are able to recover it, as they said, partially. And we are working uh, seriously with YouTube to see how we can be able to bring our contents back and also to uh, make sure that the name Ripple, wherever it's coming from, goes back wherever it's coming from. They have tried, but God passed them, as you know. So I want Obedient Family TV to know, um, obedient, Obedience Worldwide to know that the Obedient Family TV is here to stay. They'll continue trying and they'll keep failing. For all what we're doing, they felt, is now to disrupt uh, the organization of the obedient family. But they can succeed. That's why we say God pass them. If you're watching this very video, also help us to pray that to say that God really pass them. They will not succeed because we will continue to bring about uh, the opposition, the required opposition 
to the government of Nigeria will also continue to project His Excellency P2B and will also continue to move at the obedient movement, project the obedient movement until we are able to put our structures in place. God willing, redefining our options again for 2027. Now, the, la the listing that I have on my uh, table that I want to bring up for us before we leave is this uh, price war that is actually going on. As you can see from the this, there is a news that keeps circulating, but this coming from Arise says that the international airline reducing their prices is a conspiracy to take APs out of market. That is coming from a uh, uh, Okonkwo, they said those prices are predatory prices to make sure they move passengers back to themselves. That is Obioro Okonkwo, who happens to be the spokesman airline operators of Nigeria. Well, I think him being on this very particular uh, interview uh, and also being an operator of an airline um, or a spokesperson for them in particular knows what is going on. About a few days ago, I came across all of the price war that is going on, the crashing in prices, and I said it's good. Competition is actually good. But then, uh, since they are pushing that prices down, trying to uh, take up most of the uh, customers that are now coming back to the Nigerian carrier, which is the APs, uh, to the uh, London route, I think it's time that we Nigerians also need to react to that because we believe that um, uh, uh, APs has been in the forefront of uh, helping Nigerians. I, I recall when uh, there was a, a disaster in different parts of the country, even when xenophobia was in South Africa, APs volunteers to come and take Nigerians back. I can talk more and more about what APs has contributed to the growth of the Nigerian, not just the airspace, but to the growth of its citizens who are trapped abroad. We know what happened. Even during the COVID, we know all what APs is. So I want to use this medium to encourage one million Nigerians and obedience to really, you know, no matter. The, we know that the international airlines are good. We know Lufthansa is good. Air France is okay. Most of them are okay. But let's look at, on our own. And the person who actually showed the fact that this fair, this very air fair could actually come down. Let's patronize them. I'm not marketing for them. I've not been paid to do that, but I believe in the Nigerian context. So finally, before we hear uh, what uh, the airline people had to say on this interview on um, Arise TV, I want to remind us again that it is time for the Obedient Family Cooperative Society meeting. Wherever you are, join us now. The meeting is by 7 p.m. and it's already 7 p.m. As I'm dropping this, I'm still going to be in this uh, place right now. It is 7 p.m. Join us. This is a call. A notice of this meeting is happening now. Please join us now. Let's take that um, video from um, the interview at Arise, but I'm not coming back. Until tomorrow. Bye for now. Nigerians to to misunderstand price war with clear conspiracy to take a piece out of the market. Yes, they have made adjustments to the price. I see some of those prices as predatory prices. Predatory prices that they conspired to come down lower than a piece or close to a piece to make sure they also move back passengers on their flight. Nigeria is a huge country, large population. A piece, even if they fly five times to London a day, they can't carry all the passengers going to London. So that would have been enough consolation for those people to stay where they are if they mean well. But this is predatory pricing. It's not a price war. And what it, how it works is this. They will lower their price. They have a longer staying power. Because British Airways clearly write $15 million of loss to keep APs out of this market. And they'll still be okay. And they will not even give a hit because they can go and get 500 or 1 billion euro loan from British Bank at 0% or 1%. So what it means is that APs will be flying, 
loses money for one month, six months, obviously has its obligations to the bank at 30%, EFCC will be knocking on his door and he will be out of the market. Then when a piece goes out of the market, or United Nigeria, who is definitely joining soon, then they go back to their old prices. So what I am calling on Nigeria government is to watch out. Because in international business, that is what is called antitrust. Antitrust is that when you had deployed certain swaps to undermine competitive capacity of your competitor, this is what is going on. They should be called to questioning. If you can suddenly draw from 3 million, 4 million to 1.2 million, great news. Nigerians are rejoicing over it. But behind it, there are some element of economic sabotage. So they will, they will pry, I've said that when we are battling on Nigerian air. When those guys had asked for some conditions to enable them, prices the market. So all that glitter is not gold. So what I'm trying, Nigerian government should be up and doing. We have the government agency that should be able to interrogate this. They should be called to, and because if you do that in the U.S., in the Western world, they should call in for questioning. What is just going on is that they want airpiece and prospective Nigerian operator to go out of business. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is not in good faith as far as I am concerned. So what we need to do is that I'm calling on the government. They must have to protect our national interest. So like, listen to me. The aviation sector contributes 3.5 trillion US dollars to the world GDP. 3.5 trillion. They support employment of about 90 million people worldwide. So what it means, as is usually said, if aviation were supposed to be a country with the volume of the GDP 3.53 billion, they should be the 17th, the 17th biggest economy in the world. So the question Nigerian government should ask ourselves is, what percentage of this are we benefiting? Mm-hmm. The only way we can benefit it is if you have our own operators the criteria to make this successful is to have the population and have vibrant mobile, mobile uh, people who are ready to travel with a stronger economy. Come to think of it.